Father and our God, we want to celebrate your faithfulness. We thank you because you have been our help in ages past. You are the Alpha, you are the Omega, the beginning and the end. We celebrate you this hour. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. As we come together to learn at your feet once again, we pray, Lord, that by your spirit, you will expand the scripture unto us and our eyes of understanding will be opened and your name will be glorified. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. I want to bless the name of the Lord for the opportunity to bring the word to us again this evening in the digging deep. We thank God for the way God has been ministering to us in the recent times. And we trust God that today will not be an exemption we bless the name of the Lord last week. We bless God for what the Lord ministered to us by his word. Making it clear to us his cancer. And we believe that as we go forth to become pure gold, then we'll be useful and be ready to be used of God. And uh, we are going to pick it up from that point today. And I pray that... The Holy Spirit himself will teach us in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to be starting a series today titled Moses, a man of destiny. Moses, a man of destiny. We all know Moses, a man like no other man, a prophet like no other prophet. And the scripture says concerning him. Yes, you cannot just talk to Moses anyhow, because that's what, when God was testifying concerning Moses, that I can speak to anybody, but for Moses, though, I speak man to man, face to face. And I pray that God will bring us to this point, and we'll be able to know what God has in store for us. So we're going to be considering Moses a man of destiny. I'm going to be reading quickly from the book of Matthew, chapter number 6. That's our text for today. Matthew, chapter number 6. I'm going to be reading verse 26 to verse 30. The Bible says, Behold the fowls of the hair, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil the not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And then, looking at this scripture, I believe you are familiar with it, but we want to bring it home to us. As great as our God is, we expect him to just be taking care of great things alone, big things. But no matter how small the issue is, God is always interested. Because the scripture make it clear here that as great as he is, he still watches over the fowls of the hair and even the lilies in the field. And if God can come that low to watch over this, what we think they do not matter, that rise today and fall tomorrow, then consequently, you should know that God has a plan for you. And he has a plan for me. And we're going to be using Moses as a point of reference because we can see in the life of Moses that God had a plan for him, a long-term plan that came to realization at a point in time. So no matter who you are, no matter where you are presently, do not
not ever think that God does not have anything to do or maybe God has abandoned you or God has no interest in you or that you are too little or insignificant in any form, no matter what people have called you, God has interest in you if he can take interest in the plants that is on the field and the birds that flies in the sky. So we're going to be looking at today's topic under two outline, the first outline. Because Moses is going to be our focal point. God had a plan for Moses long before he was born. That's the first outline. God had a plan for Moses long before he was born. If you look at the scripture, you find it clear there. Following the story of Moses, his story did not begin from the book of Exodus. And knowing fully that Moses was so privileged that God even revealed what he did before the creation of the whole world. You should know the type of person Moses is. So that is, Moses, the creation has happened long, long before Moses was born. But yet, God revealed to him what he did and was able to pen it down. So the story of Moses did not start and in Exodus. But looking at the scripture, his story started more than 300 years before he was even born. It started 300 years before he was born. What does that suggest to you? Before you were born, God has a plan for you. God has a plan for me. And my prayer for you that you will not fall out of the plan of God for your life. See what the scripture says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 1, verse 4 to 5. Before I go into the story of Moses, a little bit, so that you can see how Moses came about even before he was born. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 1, from verse 4 to 5, that then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. This is the word of the Lord to Jeremiah. The same thing applied to you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knows you, and God had plan, great plan for you. And that's why the book of Jeremiah said, my plan for you, they are good. They are not of evil, but to bring you to an expected end. There is a plan. That God asked for you. When you look at the life of Moses, his story started long time ago before he was born. He started with an incident in the life of Abraham, the father of faith. And it continues even through the life of Jacob and Joseph and other people. If you look at the book of Genesis chapter number 15 from verse 7 to 8. Genesis chapter 15 from verse 7 to 8. When God was speaking to, to Abraham... He told him what is going to happen, that your seed, your generation will inherit a land that I'm going to give to them. And you move forward to verse 13 of that same chapter. God told Abraham that a time is coming that your children will become stranger in a land. And a time will come, they will spend 400 years there, and a time will come, I will send someone that will rescue them. You should know how long this will take before it came to Moses. That is, God gave Abraham revelation 300 years before Moses was born, and Moses was in that plan, and yet nothing about Moses has been mentioned. And through those periods, Abraham went with those promises. It went even up to the point that Jacob received the same promises. And by the time it came to Jacob, God reminded Jacob, if you look at the book of Genesis chapter number 37, from verse 26 to 28, it came to Joseph. When Joseph was being sold to the land of Egypt, it was the plan that God had for Moses that was coming to reality. No matter what is happening in your life, or no matter what has happened in the life of your family before now, before you were born, you should know that God has a plan for you. God can use anything. God can go through any means. God can go through 
numbers of years just to arrive at where you are or where you are going. But you need to see it clearly and you need to get closer. What is this telling us? You can know where you are going and know your destiny when you get yourself hooked to the one that created you. He has a plan for your life. And the best way for you to know the plan of God for your life is to have a relationship with him. So the first thing that you need to know that let me get in touch with the one that knows me before I was created, then you'll be able to have access to what God has in store for you. So when Joseph was being sold into Egypt as a slave, God still had Moses in the form. So you should know whatsoever that you are going through, there is a promise, there is a plan, there is a purpose of God hanging over your life that God has pre-planned before you were born. If you look at the book of Exodus, that Genesis chapter number 46 from verse 1 to 7, when Israel, that is Jacob, left the land of left the land of Judah and left the land of, uh, left the land of Canaan to the, the land of Egypt, it was a plan towards the coming of Moses. And by the time he got there, Joseph was has been waiting for them. That's, you can see God being a master planner. Joseph was sold to the land of Egypt, waiting for Jacob to come with all the children of Jacob. As God has already told Abraham before he even came to them. And by the time they got there, they were welcome. They were given a place. And over 400 years, these people grew up to the point that it was time for Moses to manifest. Everything that has been happening happened because you were coming. You have a destiny to fulfill. And I pray that you will not miss that destiny that God has designed for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So when you look at the story of, Jos uh, of Moses from the time of Abraham, even up to the time of Joseph, you will find out that no matter how good the plan of God for you, the devil will always surface at any point in time to distract you from that plan. And the devil will always look for a way to truncate the plan of God. Even before Moses was born, the devil surfaced and tried to truncate the plan of God for Moses. Let's see what the scripture says in the book of Exodus chapter number 1 verse 8 to 12. Exodus chapter number 1, verse 8 to 12. The Bible says that now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so... Get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmaster to afflict them with their burdens. And they are built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pitom, Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because, the children of, because of the children of Israel. So, devil will always raise up his ugly head. But God is always a step ahead of the devil when it comes to the destiny of his own people. So, devil raised up his own plan, but despite all the devil tried to do, the Bible said these people were growing. And the devil found out that, yes, they were growing. So, he had that another burden. When you go to that same Exodus chapter number 1, verse 15 to 16, and you, you read down, you find out that devil now planned to kill Moses before he was even born. For you to be alive today, or for you to be on the surface of the earth, God must have done a lot over your life. That's why you cannot take it for granted to be alive. So many people would have loved to be alive today, but they are no more. But for you to be alive, God has done so much. Before Moses was born, what happened? Pharaoh said that any young child that is born as a male must be slaughtered. But God positioned those people that we call destiny helper. I pray that you will locate your destiny helper and your destiny helper will locate you in the name of Jesus. The midwives were one of those people that were destiny helpers for Moses. So, when we say that 
Moses is a man of destiny, or you are a man of destiny, it means that there are destiny helper that God has positioned for you. And also, you can be a destiny helper at any point in time. The midwife chose to help the plan of God. You also can decide to be someone that will help the plan of God. And that's where we are going. You can be a vessel in the hand of God to bring to pass the purpose of God in the life of another person. While doing that, you are fulfilling your own purpose because you should be an instrument, a pure instrument in the hand of God. I pray that you will be useful for God in the mighty name of Jesus because in the place of helping the destiny of others, you are fulfilling yours according to the story of those midwives. While they were helping Moses, while they were, while we had, they, it was not even Moses they were helping. They were trying to do their own bit. Moses was in that plan. And that's why Moses was alive when he was given back to, for his parent to take care of. And that's why you need to be careful not to be part of those people that truncate the destiny of other people. Because you don't know the destiny of who you are truncating. That's why I will advise someone, if you are planning, to, if you are, into, you are doing abortion, you should know that you are truncating a life that has a destiny. Imagine if the parent of Moses has committed abortion. What would they have done at that point in time? Yes, God can have alternate plan, but God made them a destiny helper for Moses. Made the midwife a destiny helper. So, brethren, no matter what the devil is doing to truncate your destiny, there is an helper waiting for you. But you also must be an helper at any point in time. I pray that you will be an helper to destiny in the name of Jesus. See what the scripture said concerning being an helper. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter number 16, verse 6, By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Because of what the midwife did, the plan of the devil was truncated. I pray that you will do your bit to truncate the plan of the devil over the life of others around you in the mighty name of Jesus. You can make up your mind to choose to do the right thing at any time. And that is what the midwife did. You look at the book of Daniel chapter 3 verse 16. You see these three Hebrew men also. Everybody were saying that yes, this is what the king said and they were following suit. But they made up their mind in Daniel 3 16 and said, no, king, we are not going to begin to argue with you. We are not careful to answer you in this case because we know that it's better to honor God than to honor man. So when you are helping the destiny of other people, then you should know that you are honoring the maker and the one that can sustain destiny and also you are helping your own destiny at any point in time. You can be a destiny helper. You can be a helper to someone that is falling at any point in time to bring the plan of God to fruition. And also you should know, also that's what the this, uh, uh, the apostles also were saying in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter number 5, verse 29. Because anytime you are obeying God, you are doing the bidding of God, you are opening a destiny of somebody. The Bible said in that Acts of Apostles 5, 29, concerning Peter, he said, that, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men, because we are helping a destiny. I pray that the Lord will make you a destiny helper. But in this, you should know that God had a plan for your life before you were born. And that plan is still there. But the only thing you can do to walk in that plan is to seek God. And when you find God, then you find the plan of God. Then you find your destiny. And you can walk towards this destiny. No matter what a man is doing, if you are not walking in line with God, then you are pulling down your destiny. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 127 verse 1, Psalm 127 verse 1, except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. You cannot pursue your destiny 
without the help of the one that gave you that destiny. God is interested in every step of your life. God is interested in every move of your life. And you need to understand this and know this. That despite what the Pharaoh might be doing, despite what the enemy is doing, God has his own plan and the plan of God can come to fruitfulness in your life. Let's go quickly to the second outline. The second outline says that God can use his enemies to achieve his purpose. When God is interested in you, like I know that he's interested in you that you are hearing me at this moment, you should know that God can use anything because God has the power over every situation. He owns everything and he controls everything. Moses was born into the center of a tough battle between God and the devil. Pharaoh was saying that every son that is born must be killed. No son must survive. Just like what happened when Jesus was born. That Aaron said they have to kill children from two years below. But God knows how to use his enemy to achieve his purpose. What did God do? You look at the scripture in that book of Exodus chapter number 2 from verse 1 to 4. You find out that the family of Moses, after they gave him back to Moses, they kept him for some time. But they could not keep him further. And when you get to from verse 5 to 10, what did they do? They said, let's just, at least we have done our part to preserve this. To preserve this boy, we can no longer preserve him again. Knowing fully that God has a plan, and they have been working and cooperating with God. They let him go, they put him in a basket, and it was going. But God, that works in mysterious ways, raised up the daughter of the arch enemy. I pray, as you go through this journey of life, everyone that you come in contact with, no matter what they think about you, they may not like you, God will raise them as your destiny helper in the mighty name of Jesus. So that's why you don't have to be so much careful about man. All you need to look at is look at your God. Because he can use your worst enemy to be of helper to you. So God used the daughter of Pharaoh to preserve the life of Moses, even in the palace of Moses. The purpose of God for Moses, God knew it. Even the parents didn't knew, didn't know it. But yet, they did what they can do based on the inspiration of God. And God brought their way the helper that you can never imagine, which was the daughter of their arch enemy. So God can achieve his purpose by enemies. So when God said that, I have a plan for you. I have a promise for you. All you need to be, know is that God has spoken it. And because God has spoken it, he will bring it to pass. When God has promised that I'm going to do this for you, all you need to be sure of, yes, I'm in line with God's plan for my life. And God can use anyone for me. So you don't have to say that, you know, if help can come, we cannot come from this place. Or be focusing your attention in one particular place. Just focus your attention on God and your help can come from anywhere because God can use any man because he has his plan before you were born. God is always fully ready if we are ready for him. Look at the book of Acts of Apostles chapter number 7 verse 21. Look, uh, Acts of Apostles chapter 7 verse 21. To buttress what I said, the Bible said, and when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son because he's a man of destiny. You are a man of destiny. You are a woman of destiny. God has something in store for you. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 to 26. Hebrews 11, 24 to 26. The Bible said that by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect under the recompense of the world. What is the scripture telling us here? When God has used anyone for you, it might be your enemy, it might be enemy, that is not an indication for you to go and join them. 
Because some of us, we are too loose to the extent that the moment we see help from somebody, that person becomes our God. Under no circumstances must you abandon the God that gave you that help to look up to man. God will always use anyone, but don't begin to take that person as your helper. Look at God at any point in time and give him all the glory. As I round up, just to portray this point also, you should know that it is only God that is your helper. Psalm 105 verse 8. The Bible says that he had to remember his covenant forever. The word which he has commanded to a thousand generations. God will never forget what he has said concerning you, and he will always stand by you. Brethren, let me remind you as I conclude today, God has planned for you. As great as he is, and you think that you are insignificant, if he can take care of the lily of the valley, take care of the birds in the hair, then he's ready to take care of you. But what you need to do is to position yourself with God. And when you position yourself with God, then your destiny will become a reality. You are a man of destiny, just like Moses. I pray that your destiny will not be cut short and your destiny will not be cast away in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you for your word that you have brought to us. That if you have planned for Moses, then you have planned for us. And we ask, oh God, the grace to rightly position ourselves so that you will be able to bring us to the full potential that you have given to us. Father, grant to us all in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. For adventure, you have any question, you can put it on all our handle and all these questions will be answered. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for what God has done tonight. If you want to give your offering, by the grace of God, you can see the account number scrolling on our screen and I want to encourage you that on Thursday we are going to be having our faith clinic at this same time. On Sunday you are also can join us on all our handles as it's been scrolled on the screen. And as you do this, I pray that this time God will make you stronger and the Lord God Almighty will fulfill his promises concerning you. Next Tuesday, we are going to continue in this digging deep on Moses, a man of destiny. And I pray that the, your destiny will not be cut short in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we share the grace together in fellowship? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom.